Okay, so the purpose of this video today is to discuss the 1939 decision of the Privy Council in Francis Day and Hunter Limited against 20th Century Fox Corporation. In 1892, a gentleman by the name of Gilbert composed a song titled The Man Who Broke the Bank at Monte Carlo. According to the Privy Council, both the words and music were of the most commonplace character, but the music went with a jaunty swing which gave it great vogue and popularity. The song was registered in London at the time and acquired copyright under the relevant Copyright Act, and upon Gilbert's death, that copyright eventually transferred to the appellant company. It was valid under the existing English law at the time until 1950, uh, but in 1935, 20th Century Fox distributed a film in Canada that also went by the title of The Man Who Broke the Bank at Monte Carlo. It's probably worth noting at this stage that other than a shared title, the song and the film shared no real cult common elements, and neither the song nor any references to it were featured in the film in any form. The song was about a guy who won big and apparently did a lot of swaggering, whereas the film followed a Russian taxi driver who lost it all. Uh, the claim brought by the appellants was for damages for, firstly, infringement of the appellant's copyright in the song by its performance in public, secondly, for infringement of the literary copyright for use of the theme and identical title of the song, and thirdly, for passing off the film as an exhibition of the song. Uh, in respect of the first limb of the claim, the Privy Council were pretty swift in dismissing any suggestion of infringement of copyright in the song by its performance in public. Firstly, the performing right was not actually properly protected, as the copyright owners hadn't published the required notice that the right to perform it was reserved, and there was also the trifling issue that the film had not in any way, shape or form actually performed the song, or any variant of it. Uh, the bulk of the discussion, and really the enduring principle to come out of the case, were the holdings and discussion about the literary copyright for the use of the title and the theme of the song. Uh, given the difference in the theme of the two works, the consideration was mostly confined to the similarity of title. Um, the respondent's argument was as simple as pleading that the established position was there's no copyright in a title, and to the extent there might be, in this case the title was such an unsubstantial part of the work as a whole that there was no infringement. Uh, the first thing the Privy Council identified was that it was, it was important here that both the works were of a different character, that is a song compared to a film. Using the analogy of the uh, statue of Adam, precluding any later work of any kind in history ever using the word Adam, the court used that as a pretty good example to reaffirm the general rule that a title in and of itself is generally not substantial enough to attract copyright, subject to some exceptions, and agreed with 20th Century Fox that in this case there was no copyright infringement. And the, the finding that this particular title wasn't substantial enough to attract copyright turned partly on the identical title not being a substantial part of the original work. Um, but for completeness, they also analysed the originality of the phrases used. They noted that to break the bank is a fairly common expression, and it was also put forward that Monte Carlo might be the most obvious place that achievement or accident might take place. Uh, and finally, the question of passing off was also dispensed with fairly rapidly. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there was no commonality to the two works except for the title, and their lordships suggested it was pretty difficult to imagine a, a case of passing off where there are no circumstances calculated to mislead other than the title. Uh, of course, similarity of name might be strengthened by similarity of subject matter, but in advertising the film, the theme was very different to the song. There's no suggestion the song would ever be played, and uh, ironically enough, if the song had actually been played, it would have made a claim for passing off even more ridiculous, as not only would it not be an attempt to pass off the film as the song, but anyone who was mistaken by thinking they were going to hear the song would actually get exactly what they'd come for. So just to quickly wrap up the holdings in the case, uh, ultimately the important takeaway here is that generally unless the title is a substantial part of the work, it will not attract copyright, particularly where the phrases used are fairly common or unoriginal and the mediums of the works are different.